I'm do not we a have editor. music at all? Um, no, we don't. Okay, that's curious. We could find a local band and say, "Hey, we have an estate planning." Do we have to be? I would have to listen to them. Too. No, we could do we could do one of your like emo punk bands or if whatever. If they could like. do that, that would be awesome. <laughs> would, hey, Noah, do you know what time it is? No, what time is it, Steven? It's time to talk about death and taxes. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes. My name is Noah Chrysler. I'm Steven Schreiber. And on this show, we talk about death and taxes, the two things that are inevitable in life. Um, cool. Steven is an estate planning lawyer uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. He's got years of probate experience and um, will and estate planning experience. Uh, I don't know. Steven, talk about your experience. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been, we have, uh, we've been practicing estate law since 2011. Um, we have a firm that we do entirely estate planning and probate work, so... We help people prepare to die and then fight over it if people didn't get their shit together in time. Yeah, and Stephen won't brag about it, but I will. Stephen's got a big fancy degree from, like, Duke, right? From Duke, yep. Yeah, so pff, there go you go. Go Blue Devils. I have my shirt on. Nice, yeah, look at that. So. He knows what he's talking about, <laughs> yeah. which is fun because it's juxtaposed to me, uh, and I have no idea what I'm talking about. I do, like, marketing and video stuff, um, and I don't know very much about estate planning at all. Uh -huh. So this show is about... You know, Stephen informing my stupid brain about these topics. <laughs> oh yeah, not to talk. I don't know how to talk like a normal person about these. So <laughs> this is it'll be fun. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> um, cool. On this show, we answer questions um, about estate planning. So if you guys have estate planning questions, feel free to post. You're encouraged, actually. Don't feel free, yes. but you actually feel encouraged to post a comment. Um, reach out to us with a message, if especially if you want it on the show. Um, we would love to answer your questions. Um, yes. In the meantime, we are going to be answering questions from the internet from avo.com um, avo.com is a kind of like a cesspool of like people asking for help with legal questions yes it's one of my favorite things on the internet but it's like when it's like the yahoo answers for law so people will ask all types of legal questions because they aren't sure if they actually want to hire a lawyer so it's like the internet's collection of free legal advice yes um or People asking for free legal advice from, and there's always someone who is willing to answer it in hopes that you'll hire them. Yeah. So it's it's very it's a very very strange place, like the wild west of law. It's really cool because in Yahoo Answers, it's like you don't know. I mean, the person answering your question is most likely not an expert. But oh like, no, Yahoo Answers is full of lunatics. It's, yeah. It is it is legit the best thing about the internet. Yeah. <laughs> but I like Avo because it's like this is like a legit person with an education that's answering my questions. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah hopefully. Yeah. A lot of lawyers don't actually. <laughs> use real lawyers to answer it really so, yeah they'll have like their paralegal or something really? answer it vaguely oh we should do that i mean no no, oh, no. <laughs> no we won't oh, oh no baby <laughs> but the qualify remember with avo the main uh, this is not even between, it's between me you and everyone is that the people who go on avo are probably disinclined to hire a lawyer if they're <laughs> yeah, not true. reaching out to a lawyer already that's true so if we're going to put your question out in public in hopes that someone gets answer for free, you might not want to hire someone. <laughs> that makes sense. Sweet. Um, first question comes from avo.com. Asked in Atlanta, Georgia on May 25th, 2019. Um, how do I know if an inheritance lawyer via... Um, I'm sorry. How do I know if an inheritance via lawyer of recently deceased distant relative is legit? I just got an email about a supposed inheritance, and I want to know if it's legit. And this relative's lawyer is in a different country. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably not legit. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I'll say ask your five closest friends, <laughs> have any of you received an inheritance from somebody in... I'm going to guess it's Nigeria. <laughs> There's a lot of the scams that involve Scotland or the UK. Um, and also, take that email, copy and paste it, and Google it, because you'll probably f eventually end up with a Snopes article that tells you that it's a fraud. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I have in my legal career, I have called maybe five people ever to tell them they had an inheritance. Most people who have an inheritance... Or friends or family of someone who's died and would are usually in the loop already. Um, so I'll say very rarely does a stranger contact you with money you should you that's you're entitled to. It just be skeptical, especially and eventually if you respond to them, which is totally fine if you're into trolling, 
they're going to ask you for money, and then at that point, you should call it a day. No, yeah. I mean, that makes sense, though, right? Because, I mean, it's like th- nobody really has much incentive to, like, go and track down the rightful owner of whatever the cash is. They might, is. but the, it, it, will, it will profit the lawyer somehow. Right, right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Just know when someone reaches out to you, they're they're doing it not out of the goodness of their heart, but they're doing it to make money. And right. a good chance they're might making money at your expense. Yeah. So cool. So I probably shouldn't trust the uh, Be estate. incredibly skeptical. Um, Ava was actually the entirely right form for that question. <laughs> it isn't the exact worthy form for a question about internet scams. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, cool. Sweet. Yeah. No, that, I think that's a useful piece of advice, though. You know, I mean, that's because, I mean, on the day to day, I mean, if someone has an interaction with an estate planning issue, like that's one that a lot of people might have. Hey, cool. I used to get so many of those people like my uncle, uh, this uncle I didn't know about is leaving me a fortune. It's like, say, say that back to yourself. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Does it sound too good to be true? Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> cool. Sweet. Um, when if if there was a legit, how would a legit a uh, person approach you who actually has an estate like would they email you or would it be a call or would you get like a subpoena thing what, mean, is, what is it when someone serves you papers is okay. that w- what would happen so that, that's being served so okay. usually but, probably um, not that if, so you wouldn't be served unless you were an interested party in the estate already like a heir of a deceased person um if someone act if someone unknowing if if someone unbeknownst to you left you an inheritance I mean, the estate lawyer would probably reach out to you, but this is a situation that happens so infrequently because normally the people who have an interest, the vast majority of wills leave things to family members and close friends. Right. Um, You typically do not leave money to a distant relative somewhere. Does it happen? Sure. Um, But should you expect it to happen? No. If Um, you you were to reach out to someone a distant relative right how would you how would you do it would you do it with an email or would you give them a call we or would probably do a phone call gotcha but we'd probably either a phone call it, it, it would depend so what lawyers do when we have to find someone is that we have to engage in what's called an, a search I guess, I guess that's not literally a legal term that's an actual term of search <laughs> so um there are companies that will do searches for people and so they'll give us back a report um through public record searches of like from stuff like their most recent mailing addresses and whatever, and their most recent email address and stuff like that, and we'll attempt to like bombard all those things until we can find the right person. No, oh, cool. So it could come anywhere. Um, email is theoretically possible, but it's not favored. Um, I'll try to call someone first. Cool. Because it's easier to track the history of a phone number than it is the history of a. Uh, e- uh, it's whether someone opened up the email or not, whether you got the right person or whether someone else, stuff like that. So it could happen my email. I don't, anything is possible, um, <laughs> but don't hold your breath on it. Gotcha. Okay, cool. I think most of us will go our whole lives without being contacted for this type of event. Yeah. I recently got an email from like a, someone in Nigeria and saying they were a prince and stuff. I opened it with my work email. Um, and, okay. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, um, my husband does RIT and he is, uh, there is a back end system that will stop it from um, installing um, so, in software on the computer. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice. It, it, v- it, it for, may or may not email? work. You never know if we'll break. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, don't play it around it. But Gotcha. Cool. Um, sweet. I think we nailed that one. Great. My mom's will states her estate has to be sold upon the remarriage of my father. Okay. My mom died several years ago. My grandfather left her property. After her death, my dad sold all the property. In the will, it states, my da- if my dad remarries, her estate is to be sold and divided between her children. This was my grandfather's wishes. Well, now my dad has decided to get remarried and does not see a need to have a prenup since they are in agreement. This advice was given to him by someone who works in a law firm. Um, they told him that he could do it afterwards. This particular person was has been known to be, become several elderly people's power of attorney. Therefore, she ends up with all of their possessions. I'm afraid they are misleading my dad for other intentions. He's in his late 70s, and I am not going to see him take advantage of. Uh, what options do my siblings and I have? Okay, so once again, there's a question that doesn't need to be on AVO. It needs to be in a lawyer's office. <laughs> but... um. So it, 
So let me. This let is me, a failure. If I'm gonna blame anyone for this problem, I'm gonna I'm gonna blame the dad. Mom fucked up her estate plan. So mom could have set up a trust. She could have had these terms explicitly stated and had a third party trustee um, oversee the management of the assets, so that when dad inevitably remarries. Um, that this problem would be managed um, for them. Um, it looks like um, she may have also created a situation that might be not enforceable about the right to remarry. Okay. Um, Why is that illegal? To it's not illegal per se. It means a triggering event. Even though dad is really, if if that was explicitly stated in the will, the dad is playing a potentially dangerous game um, of being held in breach of fiduciary duty. Um, to the eventual beneficiaries of the estate, the children. Okay, hold the, on a minute. So, so he's in fiduciary duty. He has a responsibility. As an executor, to, he has an obligation to the <laughs> remainder beneficiaries, which in the case of the children, the people who would eventually get the funds. Gotcha. Um, and I would think if that's a setup of the will, the will probably creates some sort of trust in it. Without having seen the document she's talking about, maybe that's not true. Maybe the mom just wrote like a note saying, here's what I want, mm -hmm. um, or that's stated it verbally. We, either way, I blame mom still. Okay. Mom could have so stopped this problem okay. way earlier. So hold but, on. So I want to I want to mm -hmm. uh, pinpoint on that. So so currently it's done via the mechanism of the will, right? That's, she, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, and she and so you're saying that that's bad, right? Oh yeah, it's terrible. Okay, so so <laughs> the way it currently is is she there's a line in the will that says if dad remarries, then this bad thing happens to dad, and that's a bad way to do things. It's supposed to. I think her her goal was probably to have a line in her will that discouraged. Dad Dad from remarrying, right? Um, right. Which in interferes with his right to get remarried. Yeah. If she wanted to have a backup estate plan, she should have set. She could have set it up where it automatically passes to the kids if he got remarried, or honestly, just pass it straight to the kids, or pass it in trust, or to grant her husband a life estate on the property, and then upon his death, it goes to the children. But right now, she set up a situation where. Wife number two can get her hands on the assets Oof. at the expense of the kids. Um, that sucks. And dad's insane reluctance to get a prenup and his advice to get a prenup is all I would almost consider to be malpractice by the attorney. That is insane. If anyone is going to get married and ask a lawyer, should I get a prenup? The answer should always be yes. <laughs> like, do as I say, not as I do, because I don't have a prenup. <laughs> but if someone were to ask me, should I get a prenup? The answer is yes. There's no downside to having a prenup, to having your expectations clear about what happens to the property upon the death. Of the, 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 well, would integrate with the will, but to explicitly state that the other spouse would waive her interest in her husband's assets before the marriage. Um, can I can <laughs> I jump in there for a second? So so I think I think. So I've, uh, I don't know. I've talked to some girls about these types of issues, and and I that's that's where I always came in with like was like, hey, like if I get married, I'm going to have a prenup, right? Sure. I've, I've said that, right? And and what I hear back a lot of times is like, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of a marriage, right? Like th like they say, okay, if you're going to get married, it's an all in game, you know, like there is a severe consequence if you leave, and that's kind of like the point, right? Like that's what makes it meaningful. Would you do you disagree with that idea? Or? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, I mean. If, if the point, if, if someone tells you that the point is to make a divorce painful, don't <laughs> marry them. Run away from them. Yeah. It is bad. B A D. Right. Run. Don't don't <laughs> don't get married. Okay. So think of it like going into a business partnership with someone. If someone says my goal is to make your life a living hell if you back <laughs> out of it, they do not have your best interest at heart. Yeah. And they honestly don't even have their own best interest at heart because stuff happens during marriage. Like Jessica Simpson, I'm, I don't know why this <laughs> comes to mind, but in her trash bio, which I read, and honestly, it's really good. If you're into a trash beach read, open book <laughs> is actually a solid light book to read. But when she got married to Nick Lachey, um, he wanted a prenup because he was more successful at the time. And she's like, no, that's not romantic. And then it turns out his career went to 
went to out it's it's trash <laughs> and she became the rich one and then when they got a divorce she had to cut him a check wow a pretty big check it turns out people really liked her clothing line in particular she became a businesswoman and actually like matured in the marriage while he stayed exactly the same so she she really made a bad bet against herself um like if okay, Ask okay. That, yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah, like like I, I would say ask okay, if you ask women or men really who are, have not been married before whether they want a prenup, they're gonna say no. Um, they're gonna be like, that's not romantic. That's not sweet. Ask anyone who's been divorced before if did you get a prenup. <laughs> that's who you should be asking, and they will say yes. Get it twice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. They yes uh, yeah yeah so. Well, I, I appreciate the idealism of one's first marriage. <laughs> I'm on my first marriage. Um, <laughs> but, like, I appreciate that idealism of it and the sweetness of it. But that's bullshit. Um, yeah. And also, dad has no excuse. This is dad's marriage number two. The first one ended in death, and he has no reason to bull it, And I'm going to make a bet. Don't hold me to this. But wife number two is younger. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I probably, don't know yeah. for a fact, but I <laughs> we can assume. Yeah, we can safely say he's younger. Yeah, significantly younger. Yeah, she's probably at least twenty years younger. Yeah, she's gonna bury him. Yeah, and th he's created a clusterfuck, so his kids are gonna really resent him when it's time. Yeah, if they're concerned about his capacity now, and he's getting married, and she's taking advantage of it. They are going to, if they're in Georgia, um, they should keep my name around because they're <laughs> going to pay me a lot of money to fight this estate. They're going to, they're going to buy me a new car. Um, <laughs> right. So if, well, hold on. So clarify what that means. So like if, so, so I think I know what that means because we, they're going to pay a lot of legal bills. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, the alternative to not, to not estate planning is go, dealing with a probate issue. Potentially. Right? Yeah. 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 Which costs a ton. Yes. So, so, so ballpark. Let's say an estate me, plan. Let's say a complicated estate plan costs like $5,000. Yeah. And there's, mind that for most people it costs more, less, less for a lot of people, more for a few people. Mm hmm i my first probate litigation. I charged twenty six thousand dollars. Wow! If we're talking about just mere dollars, about going to discover, about filing a case, going to court, seeing judges, fighting your step parents, going through mediation, you're talking about months and months and months, maybe years. Yeah. And you're talking about then, and that my legal bill usually comes out of the estate. So that imagine subtracting all those things that people are going to inherit, and then. X out twenty five thousand, and then X out the other side's twenty five thousand, and then suddenly, I hope that's I hope you have a lot of money. If you have a million dollars, fine, twenty five thousand, right. thirty thousand doesn't matter. Great, have fight it out. But if it's, if like it's a hundred thousand or yeah. sixty thousand, <laughs> yeah, suddenly fifty thousand starts to matter. Um, right. No, yeah, so, that's huge. That's and also, huge. just the and, it, this, and also just the emotional toll of it. You're going to pre be prepared to be emotionally amped up for two years, mm -hmm. um, and then be bitter about how it turns out. And and also re another reason about all this, all of, all of this stuff is over stuff that neither of them earned. Right. So right. Uh, so they don't that. really they don't really <laughs> yeah. have this like actual entitlement to it, right? Cause they, and they feel this weird guilt because it's like I, I'm I'm am I gonna really fight yes. my and now friend? I have a built in now now my rant's also gonna be, I'll, I'm gonna put a pin in that. Okay. But it's like all of this stuff is over stuff that other people earned. Right. So, but so I, I how, get why kids are protecting their parents from all that stuff, but also at the same level. And same for his sex stepmom. Stepmom and kids are about to fight over stuff that neither of them earned. <laughs> yeah. So um, there's always going to be that dynamic on the back burner. Yeah. No, yeah. That sounds like an <laughs> awful But But if you're concerned situation. now, talk with your lawyer because there are some options that you can do, especially if you're concerned that they're getting bad legal advice. The first thing you want to do is get good legal advice. Yeah. Um, that sounds good. And get a prenup. So get, get a, a prenup. Get a prenup. Get an estate plan. For marriage to get a prenup. Like, <laughs> like there's no excuse. Remember how your first marriage ended? Death, divorce. They walked away. They <laughs> never saw them again. Get a prenup for number two. Yeah. It's not... Yeah, it's always it's always more complicated the second time. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I if anyone ever is like, hey, we should get married, I'm going to show them this clip. <laughs> yes, honestly, <laughs> I will sit them down and talk to them. I will I will hand them Jessica Simpson's book and read the ch the chapter. Because it is such a read. 
<laughs> she thought she didn't need a prenup, and she and she wrote several million dollars later that she had to wow. give. I think she had to write him like an eighteen million dollar check or something like that. Oh my god! Because she didn't get the prenup the first time when she she overestimated her. She or the, she, underestimated she underestimated her, her, underestimate her own earning power. Yeah. So, if you're in your twenties, if you're, a, I guess, women and men, like if you. Don't underestimate yourself. Yeah. And don't underestimate the ability of your spouse to maybe one day be a dickhead. Yeah. Um, that's I'm using real. Su- I'm using the worst language today. No, that's but fine. Yeah, yeah. It's real. <laughs> they get, they, people can become trash. Like, yeah. Or they don't change and you just realize it too late after you have a bunch of money wound up in it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I love that question. That was great. That I, felt I don't know good. if I quite answered it, but I no, veered around the answer. No, you but, did. But get good legal advice. Yeah, no. Yeah. Get a get a will. Get a prenup. Yeah. And get off is, Avo. But yeah, get off Avo and get into a lawyer. I think that's perfect. Um, cool. In the state of Georgia, if there's no will, how do you determine who inherits what? I put this question in here because I I know that this might seem simple to you. Oh, no, no, no. I just don't have any idea, so I wanted to ask. So, so sweet. Let me let yeah. me actually um, – so there's some details about this guy's specific situation, but I just wanted to also talk about this. So there is acres of land that were left to my aunt. Um, my aunt has passed away with no will. She only has um, – she only have one living child now, but uh, have several grand and great grandkids. Um, legally, okay. t- who inherits the land if there is no will? Uh, do her only living ch- child inherits everything? I love Avo. This broken English is. Really I hope great. that's not their first language. No, but, um, I, yeah, exactly. Oh God, I feel bad for insulting them if it's. Oh no no no! Oh no! I mean, it could be um, if, if it's so. The schools failed them. But, um, I, was, I was a former English teacher. It like made me wince. Um, but like okay so there is a code section that explicitly states this out okay so in this okay actually i'll talk about the global rule and then i'll apply it to the specific situation okay um so the general rule is that if you're married to someone and have no children the spouse is the sole beneficiary if you, Which means they get everything. They get everything. The, is that very tough to do? That like, makes it very easy for me. Sweet. As an, okay. uh, um, so, so hold on. How does that happen? Like, do they just... Do they, they have to file the paperwork with the court. Gotcha. Um, so so with, when there's no will, you file... Uh, you, there's a few things you can file, but typically it's for, an, for the probate process, you get a letters of administration. Okay. Um, which essentially is a letter saying that I'm in charge of the estate. And I get that from the court. From the probate court, yep. I say, hey, my wife died. It was really sad. She got hit by a train. Whatever, yeah. happened. She's dead. <laughs> Um, yeah. But she's dead. She has no Do children. Do I have to have proof? Do I have to have a death certificate from a... Some courts, yes, some courts, no. The okay. general rule, though, surprisingly, a lot of courts don't require death certificates. A lot oh, of times boy. they'll just verify the death on their own with vital records. Okay. Um. So... And so the death certificate comes from the uh, undertaker dude, right? Um, the, what that guy's name? So it comes from... So most of the time, the funeral homes um, coordinate the creation of it. Okay. Um, but it... It, once the death is reported to the vital records office, they produce the death certificate and keep it on public file. Gotcha. So let's just retrace our steps. I have a wife. She gets hit by a bus and explodes. I watch it. It's terrible. We go to the funeral home. Uh, she's cremated. Yeah. They file it with the public oh, uh, vital death, records, I guess. The yeah. vital records. Cool. Um, then I can go to the probate court and say, hey. You can. Fi- you, don't, you don't even need to wait that long. Okay. She can die on Monday and you can be at the court on Tuesday in most counties. Gotcha. Um, so let's say you're in a county that doesn't require a death certificate. You could literally file the next day. And you might want to file the next day because if the bus explodes, you might have a lawsuit that you have to handle on gotcha. the Tuesday as well. Okay. Um, so what? The, what? no matter what the type of probate is, um, it's determined by – they has to have the consent of the heirs. So the heirs are the people who are, would take the uh, who would inherit if there is no will, or yeah. And so the heirs are defined by Georgia law. Um, if there's no, if there's only a spouse and no children, it would be the spouse would be the heir. Um, if there's a spouse and children, the spouse and the children would divide the estate, with the spouse never taking less than a third. So if there's one spouse and one kid, they would divide it down the middle. But if there were two children, the wife would get a third, the child, one child A would get a third, child B would get a third. Gotcha. And then if there was more than three children, the spouse would still get locked in at one third, and then the remaining two thirds would get divided out. Cool. Okay. Um, so if any of the children predecease the person, um, then we have to do another examination. So... If any of the ch- if for any child that predeceased the original person, 
if that person who if that child had their own children their children would jump into the place of the parent okay hold on a minute a lot of things just happen. Yeah. Um, if if the child had their own children. Yeah. So now there's grandchildren. So the, the grandchildren of the deceased. Yeah. The grandchildren of the deceased person would jump into the place of the child. Okay. Into that child's share. So so, so this is this is okay. So the child has passed away and the before grandchildren. Before the parent. Gotcha. And the grandchildren are surviving the child. Yeah, the grandchildren okay. would step in. Gotcha. So th- it would preserve that share. Are they are they one actor or are they two separate people? They're two separate people for the, so in, they in this get, particular estate. They get a bigger cut then. Oh, no, no, no. Well, it's, they would still share their parents' part, but they had gotcha. to individually sign off. So okay. let's say it's an area where there were, there was, I'm going to keep my math easy. There was mm-hmm. a spouse, there was one spouse and one child mm-hmm. and the child died before the parent. But that child had two children. Mm -hmm. So in that case, the spouse would still keep that half, but then each of the grandchildren get a quarter. They get 25%. They would inherit their parent's share. And but in in the situation where that child died with no children and no lineal descendants, the spouse would would jump back into being the sole heir. Gotcha. Okay. So if you have kids... And you get an inheritance, and there's no will. Then you, your kids split the stuff it, that you yeah. inherit. Yeah, and it very much depends on when. The, so, the, is it, is it if a child predeceases, mm-hmm. if a child survives and then dies, like if, like if dad dies on Monday and then the child dies on Friday, that child then has to have their estate probated, and that child's estate is now the heir and and keeps that child's interest. So it's ext- extremely timing specific as to who steps in where Hmm. because the difference might be if that if the child died before the parent it doesn't matter if that child had a will or not um because it it would still pass to the heirs of the the grandchildren still pass to the grandchildren but if the child died after the parent and that child had a will and the will left it to someone other than their than children, the then it could be redirected somewhere else. Gotcha. So it's, it, it, and this is why you have a lawyer. It's extremely timing specific over who actually is the heir. Yeah. Um, and also a situation where this is more common is that mom and dad had property together, both mom and dad die, then we have to figure out who gets what um, gotcha. and, and what parts and who's an heir of what estate and stuff like that. But, um, but as a general rule, um, the spouse and children divide the estate, and the grandchildren jump in for any dis- any child that predeceased their parent. Cool. Um, and and the grandchildren are entitled to only the portion, that- only their part. They won't step into their parents' part, right? Um, and then, um, if in a situation where there is no spouse and is no ch- and are, are there, there is no spouse and are no children. Um, then the Georgia law starts looking outward for heirs. Okay. So next in line would be the parents. If there's no parents, then it looks to the siblings of the deceased person. Um, and if there's no siblings, then we have to look down to see if any of those siblings had children, like nieces and nephews. And if that's not the case, and there's no downline from the siblings, then we have to look up another generation and look at their the deceased decedent's grandparents. And then if there's no grandparents, we have to look at the decedent's aunts and uncles. And see if there's any downline. And eventually we keep going up and over and over and over until we find their nearest relation. Wow. And in this, and most time it's not that much right. effort. Um, but, and also in this calculation, children, half siblings count as full siblings. Okay. So if there's ever any half siblings, we still loop them into to the estate. Hmm. So um, Essentially, we're looking for the nearest blood relation. Um, the, no, the people, it's key also remember the, the people who never get involved or are never heirs, anyone without a legal relationship aren't heirs. So if they were like, if someone if someone like treated you like a child but never fully adopted you, you, you aren't an heir. If there's like a long-term relationship with or without, without marriage, not an heir. It doesn't really matter about other things um but if but if you're not a blood relation you're not an heir so if you want to leave it to someone who's not that you should have had a will or trust set up to accomplish that effect or jointly title lead them the beneficiary of the account and stuff like that but they are not considered to be heirs under georgia law if you don't have a blood relationship Hmm. in that priority and there's a very long not long there's a there's a code section that details this process of finding the nearest heir and it is um Somewhat cumbersome to read. 
Um, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so this process. Let's say it's a mess, like you're describing, right? There's nobody. In this case, it's actually this particular situation is not that messy. No, yeah, this isn't yeah. that bad. Um, but but let's say let's say that it is bad, right? This person's a hermit. They don't have any family. Everybody's gone. Um, like w- the the person who's doing that search, the lawyer that's doing that search. I mean, that search is probably going to take a while. It's probably yeah. expensive, so right? What, or, yeah. So exactly. So does the lawyer? I mean, who's incentivized to actually do that, right? Um, so some people are incentivized. Um, well, maybe not incentivized, but there might be a reason that they administer a seat even without knowing the heirs. Um, is that there's assets that are being lost. Um, so for example, if there's a house, the government and the na- people might want the house sold, so someone might administer the estate on their behalf. Okay, so sell somebody, the property, somebody from the HOA or um, something? Or, yeah, a friend or something, they might administer gotcha. their estate, or if they're completely hermited, but honestly, even a, any member of the public over the age of 18 could theoretically probate the estate. Huh. But realistically, the likeliest person who might jump in is if they owe, if that deceased person owed someone else money, they might jump in to probate the estate so that they can get their debt paid. Um, so okay. they, may, they may ask the county to administer the estate. So the county, there is a county administrator in every county in Georgia who, is, who can be in charge of the estate um, and then pay off the debts and literally hold the money in perpetuity until they find an heir. So the cash would just sit in a bank account until they found the right person. And if it's not, it might have to get turned over to the estate, the, sorry, the state of Georgia to be held until they find the right person. Hmm. And someone has to have to make a claim. That money could just sit there for, I don't know, forever or until Georgia law says it finally goes into the state general fund, which I think is decades and decades. Okay. So um, so, so worst case scenario, you don't find an heir. It goes to the government and then it, just it sits there. It sits there it for decades. The state. And yeah. then it goes into some account that the, the, the government. If I eventually just, the government, because eventually the government, the government wants you to claim your money. Right. Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't have the code section in front of me to know how long they hold it, but they hold it for a very long time. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> and then if it, worst case scenario, gets spent on if, roads and infrastructure? Or? <laughs> eventually, that might be what happens. <laughs> or but, some, um, some administrator's <laughs> Yeah, paycheck? that I don't know. I, I can't recall exactly what happens at that point. But yeah, you okay. might eventually be losing all the taxes. But for huh. the most part, um, estates rarely fail for lack of beneficiaries. Um, eventually, you'll find out your uncle has died. And this is not like a, some, like this might be the one scenario where someone calls you and says your your uncle, you, your long lost step uncle, or not step uncle, <laughs> your great uncle died, and you're the nearest relation. So right. make a claim on the estate. Right. But it will not come from some weirdo in a bank overseas in all likelihood. Um, it will with probably a, come with from a hotmail like email address. And it will like probably a, come from an actual lawyer with a bar number. Right. Um, who just wants you to claim this so they can close up the estate and move on with their lives. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. Um, the land that was left to her aunt, her aunt passed and she has no will. Yep. Um, only one living child, but had several grand, great grand and great grandkids. Um, so. What I'm assuming is that when she says the word living child, she implies that there are There's deceased a children. Child, yeah. So if the deceased children died before the aunt, those grandchildren are heirs. The, the grandchildren are heirs. Okay. So we have to calculate them in. So let's say there's one dead aunt. She has three kids. Two of the kids are dead, and there's one living yeah. heir. So the kids would, would There'd be, be in three ten, buckets. Three buckets, and then those buckets get split by the downline yeah, or whatever yeah, exactly. of Exactly. So okay. the living one obviously gets to keep their own bucket, and then the other two buckets get split up amongst their the respective children. Cool. So just because a child predeceased doesn't mean their kids are cut out. Um, Georgia law typically keeps them in. Cool. Okay, that's super interesting. Thank you very much for. I, I am enlightened. <laughs> so, um, Hopefully, I have a nice, fancy estate plan. This is I all why people should have wills. This is it gets way too complicated. Yeah, um, it becomes a weird logic tree of like. Oh no, yeah, I, it, it, it's unfortunate that you can, someone can make. I've been doing this for nine years now. I still have situations where I'm just like writing out family trees to figure out who does, who gets what, and what percentage. Yeah. It's a real pain, and it's guys. When I do it, it costs people money. Um, I, I, my my timer is running. Yeah. Um, when I when I have to calculate. No, and rightfully out. so. I mean, that's like a big pain in the ass. Oh yeah. Have to <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, cool. Okay. How can I find my grandmother? Um, if my grandmother left me any money when I was young, um, my 
Medea is that a like a cultural term? I think that's a like term. A, that's a term. Okay. I think I think Tyler Perry claimed it again. Like, <laughs> okay, that, yeah, that exactly. is actually like a cultural term. <laughs> okay, I'm um, an idiot. Um, told me that she had to. Um, she had open. She had opened me. She had opened me a savings account, okay. and I could not touch it until I was 21. But she got sick and passed away. So how can I find out what bank it's in? She also has stocks and bonds too, and a house. I love this person. They talk like an old prospector. Okay. She had me a bank account. <laughs> this is okay. Yeah, this is a pain situation. Okay, so it depends on what kind of account she set up. So it's usually she set up a bank account. So it could be an account that falls under the UTMA which is the Universal Transfer to Minors Act. Georgia has a slightly different name for it, but if you set up that account, it would be in the, it would it would automatically transfer to the child once they turned 18. Cool. It would just be them trying to figure out what bank it's at. I don't there's not really a database of where people keep their banks because that would be insanely insecure for the world. Right. I don't want there to be a database of someone knowing that I have an account at whatever bank. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to out yourself. Like, come oh, no. get me. I'm I at Citibank. I've, like. I've worked at a lot. I've had a lot of bank accounts in my life. But, um, but like, the idea is that she probably would have to – I guess the okay, – first thing I've done since it's been so long, if you're in Georgia, go to the Secretary of State's um, unclaimed property page. If an account has been left idle for a certain amount of time, I think it's like a year or two, and there's been no activity, it'll be turned over to the Secretary of State. So first thing I would do is look up my name in the database and see if the account already reverted to the state for, uh, essentially they'll hold it for you. And if that is the case, that's the easiest way to get it. Just claim it um, and move on with your life. If it was in her name, and she, if she said she set up a savings account for you, but it turns out it was a savings account in her own name, yeah. it might have gone to her estate and been distributed with the estate, and that might have been just an unfortunate event that occurred um, because the grandmother didn't consult with an estate attorney and no exact. Or honestly, there might be a situation where she set up the account in her own name and set it up to pass on death to her grant to, was it a granddaughter? Um, um, this was, it doesn't, doesn't say. Oh, to the, whoever it is, whoever, the question writer. Yeah. Um, that's a case that might, it might have reverted to the estate, might have reverted to say Georgia and it would pop up in that system too. But I would say if there's any guesses on what bank your grandmother may have used, it's going to be annoying, but you're just going to have to go from bank to bank to bank. Um, often I would say do it in person with a desk or doing the paperwork and be like, hey, is there any, my grandmother, did my grandmother have a bank account with you? Really? Yeah. So hold on a minute. So It might so, be really annoying. So you might, okay, so you first, I mean, if you make a to-do list. With the, start with the Secretary of State because you with, do that from home. Start with the Secretary of State. There's a website. I log in something. Yeah. I'm not going to, obviously, you probably don't know the URL. Like I mean, yeah, if you Google George Secretary of State unclaimed okay. property, okay. it'll bring up like a link to a search. Sweet. Um, if if it was in her name, if the savings account was in her name alone, yeah. it would be in the Secretary of State would know that. Yeah, yeah. It would if it was in her name. Yeah, exactly. Because it's probably been idle for years. Okay. So search for her name. It would come up. And also maybe search for your grandmother's name. And there's also a not zero chance that her grandmother's state may not have been probated. Okay. So I would search for both and see what comes up. Okay. Um, um, okay. And if that doesn't work, you're saying let's you might say, have to go to the bank. Let's say it doesn't. Account. It doesn't happen, right? Yeah. There's no. Uh, th th we search for grandma's name. We search for my name. It's not in there. Yeah. Um, then I go bank by bank, and I knock well, on the door. Yeah, I would, I would. I would start with her likeliest bank. Okay. So um, most people don't use that many banks. Yeah. And this is also why we want to do things right after someone dies. Yeah. Um, so we don't so – because at that point, we know where their bank account is because, you know, like, hey, Wells Fargo sent you a bank statement or Chase or whatever. Okay. Because you just go there and then get it resolved. If this sounds like it happened years and years ago, and now you've created a pain for yourself. Yeah. Because we don't even know if the bank exists anymore. Right. So it might Could be, be a situation like Wachovia, one. which – actually, my very first bank account was set up at First Union. Um, which is now, which then became Wachovia, and now is Wells Fargo, and I solved that same bank account. Cool. And every time it's a, it's it would have been a huge pain if someone had died like f fifteen years ago when yeah. it was still First Union, and now no one knows where to go. Yeah. Um. So. Hmm. Someone also let her down by not following up on this for her when she was younger. Because uh, and maybe they did, and I suspect there's a non-zero chance too that they followed up with it and then stole her money. <laughs> that sucks. So, but having said that, 
she can she should do some footwork. It's, I think it's a situation where she can has the energy and the ability to. It might be worth to do the footwork on it before talking with an attorney. Because mm-hmm. I think it, it's probably not worth the paying an attorney to do the footwork on finding the account. Yeah. Um, you kind of do your own sleuthing around and see what you can find. Yeah. Hit the pavement. Mm-hmm. Go mm-hmm. knock. Talk to some. Well, honestly, hopefully you can call the banks now because a lot of them are open. In right. Person, right. Yeah. So so okay. So go to the state. Uh, uh, what was the person called? Oh, uh, Secretary of State. Go to the Secretary yeah, of different State. Different states have different agencies, but Georgia. Secretary of State has the unclean property. Gotcha. Go there first. If that's not the Department of Revenue, I might have been saying the wrong agency. They're fine. <laughs> Whatever it is, un- yeah. Georgia unclaimed property search, it will pull up the right agency. It might be Department of Revenue. So if I if I've been if I if whatever it is go to that yeah we're on the record now <laughs> yeah. steven we're, we're experts now so we yeah. gotta <laughs> whatever it is find it um that's okay. i've never failed to find it by googling exactly cool go to that if you can't find it there then then go bank by bank do a little scavenger hunt um if you are trying to set up a account for one of your grandchildren or one of your children in order to not have them go through this nightmare you could, process you could do two things you have a the trust U- account or okay. set up a utma account utma is upon timely my death or something what was oh that no idea? no as, as soon as the beneficiary turns 18 it's their money gotcha what don't was... leave don't leave them large sums of money that way <laughs> if you're gonna leave them like five thousand dollars or something or whatever your college of book money or something like that that's cool what did what did utma stand for again oh uniform transfers to minors act okay yeah um, yeah and that's the national model law but georgia has a state version of it i want to say it's the georgia transfers to minor act or whatever, I deplore or whatever. I, bet whatever. To, I think it's GTMA for okay. us, but it's the same deal. Um, it's a way of giving money to children, um, but the, the child doesn't get to take money out of it till they become of age. Cool. Um, but honestly, I would say for most adults, for most people, if you're gonna leave them large sums of money, set up a trust for them. Um, even if the trust is like funded with like your life insurance or something like that, but you don't because you don't want eighteen year olds to get money. Yeah. And also, you want your eighteen year olds to have be in this situation where they're going and have to poke around bank to bank to bank to find it. Yeah. To set up a trust, cool. set up a responsible trustee, which hopefully is a corporate person or a neutral or an attorney or someone who has no interest in the money themselves, so they can just pick up the, that person, just pick up the phone and call the um, person and be like, "Hey, you were left money. Here are the terms of how you received the money." Um, have a great life, and we'll see yeah. you when it's time to, you, and we'll issue you the checks accordingly. Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, sweet. That makes a lot of sense. Um, great. I think I'm out of questions. We we okay. we killed that. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, sweet. Am I looking at a probate nightmare? Um, my mom. <laughs> Wait, if you have yes. to ask the question, you're halfway there. <laughs> uh, it just my, depends on what you think a nightmare is. <laughs> my mom posted a property bond for my husband and myself. The case isn't important. I'm confident that it'll be dismissed using a public defender. I don't know what any of that means. Oh, a property bond. So, so yeah, so got I arrested. Go- I googled that and then posted a bond against the property. Yeah. Okay. So so these this is this is a I now remember I now remember seeing property bonds to how you, how you make sure that if you, yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is a wife and a husband. Uh the wife is writing the question. But yeah, they both got booked for a crime but and the both? mom yeah, they both went to jail. I mean, it's in the question later, but okay. they both go to jail, and then the mom writes their bail bond uh, against the property, right? Against so, her property uh, or their property? I'll leave finish. I'll let you ask the question. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, let's read the whole okay. thing. Um, but first offense, um, we're old and crippled, and it's a minor marijuana charge. Wait, wait, wait. Start, start the question over. <laughs> my mom posted a property bond for my husband and myself. Uh-huh. The case isn't important. I, I broke the law, but it, don't worry about it. I, I Lottie, <laughs> Lottie, Dottie, Don over like the most interesting part of the question. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I killed a man, but don't yeah. worry about it. Um, I'm confident it'll be dismissed using a public defender. First First offense, we're old and crippled, and it's a minor marijuana charge. Okay, so they were they're old it. and crippled. It was just a word crippled. I don't know. <laughs> Is this like 1940? <laughs> anyway, sorry. No, you're fine. They're six years old, and they're sharing a joint, and the <laughs> cops broke in. Um, but my mom is 94 and could die any day, and my husband has don't, leukemia. Don't tell that to mom. <laughs> you can go any minute now. Okay, my husband, mom. my husband has leukemia and will most likely be dead before court. This is a terrible. Wait, so, thing. He, so he has leukemia and did it, they arrested a man with leukemia <laughs> for smoking pot? Yep. Is pot, people don't even say pot anymore, whatever. It's called I marijuana. Think, no, pot is fine. If my mom well, dies. Like, my, my, people made fun of me for saying pot. 
<laughs> if my mom dies while her property is tied up in this bond, is it going to be a probate nightmare? If my husband dies... So that's the first question. Let's just start there. Okay. So, so It won't mom, be a probate nightmare. Okay. Uh, the bond is released. Okay. So what they have to make sure is that when the case is successfully adjudicated, that the bond gets released. If mom dies before the case is dismissed... Uh, what happens? Since mom approved the bond, um, yeah. the bond was going to, the, the bond that's going to, they're going to keep, the, the bond will stay a lien on the property until it's let go. Um, they can't sell or distribute the property until the bond is resolved, but her death per se doesn't make the bond invalid. Um, the bond will just be there until it's not there. Okay. So it's just going to, it's just going to be like a gray cloud over the property distribution until they get acquitted, hopefully, yeah. or until they, whatever the terms of the bond are satisfied and they can, they can release it. So let me ask this. So it's really incentive. Don't, they should not flight. So as long yeah. as they don't run away and the bond has become payable, they, they'll get the property. Yeah. They'll get they, they, the property will eventually be passed on. That's assuming that they, that the, that the case is dismissed though. If they, if they go to jail, right. And they're okay. convicted. This they're drug dealers, this right? This is a little bit outside my right. um, purview because I don't do criminal cases. Um, James, our associate, he's actually coming from criminal world, so he could probably, he's actually a public defender. I hope he's not their public defender. <laughs> um, but um, it, it would, he would lot. have a great that would be super helpful yeah. um, in this particular answering this question. <laughs> but um, I believe once you're acquitted, the bond goes away. And I think even if you're convicted, I think the bond goes away. But I don't – I do not put me on like – The stand, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I assume once they know where you are, they no longer need the bond. So if you're incarcerated, we don't need a bond because they know where they are. Right. Um, but I think the bond is to make sure that you show up at court. Um, so as long as they don't violate the terms of the bond and the bond gets released and gotcha. the bond, bond company gets paid whatever the bond fee is. Okay. Um, then the property gets released. It'll and then eventually it goes, get released. Then yeah. it goes into probate and they they split yeah. it. Or and whatever, they can start or, the probate, but this, at that point, then they can split it or whoever her heirs are or gotcha. if she has a will, whoever the beneficiaries of the will are. Okay. Um, I wish to invest in their criminal case, but... Um, Legalized marijuana, but like, um, yeah, there's not much to be said about that. Um, I, I, I really my, want to know what more about it. Yeah, here's the next question <laughs> If my husband dies before the court date, does it release her property at time of death, or is I, he still, or is it still tied up until the court date that he will miss? They may have to talk to their bail bond person about that, but I suspect that if you're dead, they'll release the charges. Okay, so they'll probably. Yeah, I assume they'll drop the charges if they can shoot, show that you're dead. So yeah. if the prosecutor can go to your funeral, weirdly, or if they have the death certificate or something like that, I assume that for the most part, they'll re the charges, I assume they'll get dropped. There's no point in pursuing it. So I assume the bail requirements will also either be eliminated. So I don't think it'll be an issue, but it really makes the... Pro the prosecutor in the case sounds like trash. <laughs> Hopefully he drops the charges and the prosecutor just doesn't realize that um, the situation. And honestly, okay, this is my political say. The, really, in this case, the police are being trash. Right, right. <laughs> no, yeah, the, the arresting officer. I mean, or this person is like... <laughs> or they're a lying liar, liar yeah, pants. <laughs> right. But, uh, and also, way. I don't know, if this guy sounds like he has leukemia, I feel guilty for, I don't know, kind of like making a <laughs> oh, joke no, yeah, their situation. Oh, no, yeah, if they're leukemia and the marijuana is making them comfortable or whatever, right, right. And that's, I assume that's what they're implying is the right. case, which I hope he stays comfortable. And the law against... That drugs and law against marijuana is stupid. ridiculous. Yeah, it's entirely unrelated. Entirely pretends to arrest black people. Yeah, but um, but yeah, and also to search people's cars. Yeah, war on drugs and war on drugs and they, I can smith I smell marijuana. Now I'm going <laughs> to search your car now. Right, even though there's clearly no marijuana, but they use it to make people's lives hell. So right. um. Yeah, but anyway, but it's stupid. But hopefully, they do get their charges dropped, and, uh, and most of these things end up pleading out. If it's their first offense and it pleads out, they aren't going to be. No one's going to go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. um, cool. That's good to know too. Just to, <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. Not that I do any of that, but I just I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't. I personally <laughs> will never be arrested for marijuana possession yeah. because I'm boring. But like, <laughs> it's a stupid thing that's happening. Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. Well, that sounds like an awful situation. If that's you, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. I hope everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Turns they, around. Yeah. Oh yeah. I hope the police. I hope they drop the charges because it's stupid. I think the public defender. I hope the public defender is good. And honestly, because if they, if they don't even have their own defense attorney, it sucks too. The public defender is always overloaded. Yeah. Um, 
I was watching Better Call Saul, and he has like a long stint of being a public defender, and it's, you got to watch. It's that like show. a nightmare job to be a public defender. I'll ask, J- I'll ask James later. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring James on in a couple <laughs> weeks to talk about. To yes. talk about we're bringing it. we're bringing on a new attorney, and I'm super stoked. He's gonna be awesome. <laughs> um, cool. What legal form do I need in order to keep my daughter-in-law from inheriting or claiming the rights to my small farm? I just like this question. It's like I have a vindictive daughter-in-law. Legal form. Um, she needs a trust, probably. Okay. If her goal is to prevent her daughter-in-law from ever having it, she needs to set it up in a way that specifically excludes her. Okay. So, um, in Georgia, there's not really a. a you should want to set up a trust and make sure that upon her son's death, for example, um, it does. If she were to die and it goes to her son. If her son were then to die, then it would go to her grandchildren, whoever she chose. But she would, she could explicitly set up a series of events that explicitly make sure her daughter-in-law doesn't get it. Um, Sweet. Do you do deal with that frequently? Yeah. Oh yeah. To... People hate their in-law, their children. Really. And honestly, I don't. I get it. Like. Um, so, but yes. Yeah, so, and a lot of times, also a lot of times, they're like people want their estates to go to their kids and if they if their kids get divorced or something happens they don't want their kids spouses taking it yeah so they didn't work that hard for it so that their um daughter or son-in-law can like take it in half of it in the divorce so right um so yes yeah, so that's a, i get that a lot and a lot of times people recognize maybe it's a from the vantage point of being older that their children are engaging in a dumb marriage that will end <laughs> in divorce inevitably <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, I, I put that in there because, I mean, I think that's super interesting, right? I mean, uh, you mentioned that to me a couple of times. Like, most of the reason why a lot of people are looking for uh, estate planning services is because, like, hey, you know, like, this 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 negative actor entered my family under, you know, bad oh, yeah, pretenses yeah. and, and I'm yeah, trying exactly. to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it'd be super... I mean, people... Negative is as negative is perceived to be. But, yeah, it's... Yeah, something like that. Like, someone they don't... Someone they want to specifically keep someone out or they don't trust somebody mm-hmm. and i think it's one it's i guess part of the reason we call it a trust is that it's the trust it makes up for the trust that we don't have for other people um, <laughs> it, it is the we yeah I, I mean i'm skeptical of everybody after having done this for years i don't trust anybody at all fine it's a healthy attitude well that's not this, terrifying uh, and yeah. awful are you serious oh no no you you, you plan you can plan around not trusting people so you don't trust people you trust um legal systems processes procedures and then the people are just have to follow it yeah so hmm. that is <laughs> slightly depressing but also oh, probably, oh yeah yeah what it is <laughs> no it's good it's good safe reliable usable advice that's awesome um Custody of U.S. born kids when parents are non U.S. citizens. Both my. Um, that might be out of my. Okay, we ask it, so but it might I, be out of my. I, I put it in here, I think, because it, it does. So. Okay, we'll go ahead, me, though. Here we go. Um, both of my boys are U.S. born and hold U.S. passports. Me and my husband are Indian citizens. How do I ensure my parents or in laws get their custody in the, ve- in the event of our death? Oh, okay. I'm in the state of Georgia. I don't want my kids to, in the foster system in case anything happens to us. So. We, the in Georgia, the will is the document where you name any guardians of your children. So you would have a last will and testament, next, even if you have a trust and stuff already um, with it. But the will, you would say, if I were to die, I want if my husband and if my spouse and I were to both die, we would want these people to step in as um, guardians of our children. So, so and then me, you might give some sort of interim instruction in there um, for where, what would happen between their deaths and their in-laws coming from India or their kids going to India. But um, but you could explicitly state it. But the only problem the state has, and you might want to file the will with the court and also make sure that you have somebody on the ground that you have trusted to know that, um, what, what would happen. Okay. So it might be a stuff like with a school, make sure you have that card filled out where if there's an emergency, they have the contact. Gotcha. Um, but some friend or someone who could, let, if something were to happen. Who they know would, what should happen. Yeah, exactly. They'll gotcha. pick up the kids and then make sure that the wishes were followed and tell them, hey, this is our desire. Yeah. Okay. So hold on a second. So, so 
before we get into the details of like how to do i want to make sure that i fully think yeah. i understand this person's problem so so they are indian citizens they're not u.s citizens they're probably here on like well, visas the, the or... parents are indian citizens okay. the children are american citizens right yeah so so do you think they're they're probably here on visas right sure um, or there might be your visas green cards something sweet. okay yeah. um green card is like a more permanent like, it's a permanent resident yeah they have perm they have permanent residency for a the period of time sweet okay um cool so are we assuming that the parents live in india or that the parents live in the united states i was states? assuming that the gr i guess <laughs> yeah the grandparents the gran i was assuming the grandparents lived in india um but if not regardless of where they live though we would have the, the will would mention what the will should state that i want them to get the kids okay um and ideally also have their contact information in the document so, um, so one one interesting thing here: you don't have to be a U.S. citizen in order to have no. like a will, and then have it be filed through the no, United no. States court. The system. will, um, you would want a Georgia will if you live in Georgia. Okay, so it's based on your domicile. Okay. So the, the Georgia courts doesn't they, we don't ask if you are an American citizen. We just ask if you where are you a resident of Georgia and did you live in Georgia? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So even if there are actually non citizens, if even if you are just an undocu if you are undocumented. Um, resident, um, you should you could still have a will, and if you were to die, it would still be filed here. Really? Yeah, that's super interesting. I had no idea. So it's entirely based on that's how jurisdiction is established. We have physically stepping foot and having a address here. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um. Sweet. And so basically, if they if they created a will, then they could basically say who gets custody of the kids. Yeah. And then very the, yeah. The, the nationality is actually kind of a non-factor. I could see why it's a concern for her, but in, under the law, it's not really a consideration that a court would look at. Okay. Um. That's super interesting. <laughs> okay. Um. It, let's assume it actually that it lowers in some ways. Uncynically, her kids being Americans, um, actually lowers her tax issues if her kids inherit from her really because there's a really low for for americans there's a for there's an estate tax um there's a federal estate tax that has 11 and a half million dollar exclusion but that applies for american citizens um if 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 part of the if the estate goes to non-citizens there's a way lower exclusion and the likelihood of taxing goes up so if ideally if parents ever became American citizens and their kids became American, it would just kind of wipe the tax slate clean. Um, and I believed having their kids, it could, depending on how tax policy flows, um, their kids would actually receive it without an estate tax. Having said that, tax law has changed, will change. Um, not, that's not tax advice. It's just an observation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that the grandparents are living in India. Sure. Um, D and they and they say when I die I want the kids to go to my the gr the grandparents yeah. in India. Uh, how does that happen? I mean, I mean theor generally happens the same way all of it does. But okay. um, somebody someone would have to contact them. Okay. Um, and f the will which should hopefully be filed with the probate court and the court also have notice because the court's also going to issue an order. So the probate court when they probate that will, they're, they're simultaneously going to issue an order. Um, granting um, guardianship and conservatorship of the children um, of custody, essentially a temporary custody of the children um, to whoever the will names if they if the court finds that they're adults of sound mind and are in the best interest of children they're going to make a deep custody evaluation that might be that's going to be for a superior court to make if an adoption needed to ever be done but it would be enough where the court and the court may have to approve them leaving the country, mm -hmm. but it would enable the grandparents if they were to come to the U.S. even for like a period of time to at least um, get custody of the grandchildren until everything was resolved. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um. Sweet. Yeah. That makes sense. Um. Great. That. Uh, is is the end of our AVO questions. Um, and we've been going for about an hour now. Okay. We've got 30 minutes um, for some other uh, segments that we have. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So I, one of the, and, and okay guys, let me, let me level with you. Here's, here's, uh, uh, we're trying about out a bunch of different stuff. Um, we've got a couple different names of segments and things. Um, and at this, you know, these 30 minutes, I'm going to, we're going to test some of them out. Um, so cool. Um, we're still in the early version. This is episode two. All right. By, by episode 30, we're going to nail this. We're going to be like, Oh, welcome back to this segment. We'll have a oh, little yeah. cool intro to the segment. <laughs> um, but anyway, cool. Uh, 
this is one that's called pieces of advice um and one of the pieces of advice uh that you said that you wanted to speak to is that assume the government has is not going to take care of you um so what does that mean steven um, i'm gonna broaden that so let's assume that no one will take care of you okay, okay. so i think that in a state like us in particular um and this is gonna fly in contrast with my political leanings oh no oh. <laughs> well, partly it will in some ways but like um i think there is a const there's a thinking that is prevalent among many people um that someone owes them something um and it ranges in the state law from like my parents owe me an inheritance and they're surprised that their wills or things don't provide that. Um, it in some or or people waiting for a parent to die. Yeah, um, that's messed up. Jeez. <laughs> uh, and on and, and um, your parents are jackass. That's one reason to wait for them to die. But if they're just waiting for them to die to get a check, that's a diff way different. Yeah. Um, and also, like, just generally, like, around, I see a lot of passivity almost of late in our society. And I see us as a bleeding heart liberal. Um, but, like, with, like, retirement planning, there's not a lot of aggressive moves on it. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of people saving. You know, I've heard, like. Yeah. And also, a lot of people don't know or a lot of structures don't reward it. Um, and having said that, I, um. And this is also something I work on myself, my own personal retirement. But I think the notion that um, is prevalent amongst people that there will be a system that kicks in place that will fix our problems is not gonna is isn't bearing out. Um, and this is where I'll put back on my liberal hat. <laughs> um, and Donald Trump has kind of proven that if government doesn't want to work, it won't work. Mm -hmm. um, if you were going to assume that the government would fix a pandemic that every other Western democracy has fixed, or at least in a reasonable way, right. we can let go of that assumption. Right. Um, if we can assume that the government will send bailouts to people um, after they lose their jobs or the economy falls apart, we can kind of let go of that notion. Um, yeah. No, I think the, that, that our society can provide jobs or housing or things of value. Um, and I kind of think, kind of pivoting into the more positive notion. So I kind of think the breakdown of society, and also the same way, like in my business, and just generally, this is like, uh, am I entitled to have clients? No, I'm not. Um, am I entitled to have an office or this or that or cars or clothes? Not really. Um, but. But I think there's like an opportunity now for us to kind of realize that no one is ever – we should not expect anyone to help us ever again right? Um, on a societal level. You know, if somebody's on a personal level, um, yeah, that, that won't happen. I mean, it shouldn't be expected. The defaults that we have, we shouldn't have our mail to arrive anymore. Um, like, yeah, jeez. Like, oh, my God. Uh, seeing seeing yeah. those trucks full of, like, uprooted mail boxes is, like, it, it definitely... I mean, I don't even... I don't love the post office, but it's even fine. just seeing it does that... It yeah. It's just, like, yeah, but, I mean, it's, like, even... That's still... I mean, I don't know. I think that that's... In my mind, that's tied to, like, you know, America a little bit. It's, like, yeah, oh, yeah. That's American like, flag. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's weird. It's weird. It's I don't like know. It's, like, watching societal decay yeah. and QAnon and things. We just have to recognize that nothing... Is permanent. Nothing is permanent. All the yeah. things. There's no such thing as security. I guess that's really my point. Is that right. there's no such thing as security. Yeah. The they can rip the mailboxes right out of the ground, yes. and nobody will do much. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, that's. I think that's really great advice. I mean, I. I uh, I know he's not. I mean, he's a. He, I think he's actually a really big Trump supporter. But I think I follow like Robert Kiyosaki a okay. lot. Do you know Robert Kiyosaki? Yeah, yeah, rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. You know, I mean, he. I don't know. Some of his advice. People say that oh, he got rich, you know, by writing books, not by actually like. He says he got rich via real estate, but like people are like, no, he, his net worth was really low before he actually wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad, which now sold forty million copies, and yeah. that's why he has money. Um, so honestly, I respect the hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly i mean hey he, he found a way to make it profitable but um i think uh, one of one of his tenets right is like people get so caught up with like who's gonna be the president who am i gonna vote for and they like it, it 
defines who they are which i mean there's an argument to be said that like yeah that's important but like one of his things is like it doesn't really matter who the president is the government's not ever going to do that much for you you know who's actually going to help you is yourself uh so actually sure i agree i yeah i would not I, okay it's I'm going to have two separate parallel views. Okay. One, we sh- the government should do good for people, and right. we should demand it do good and make sure that there's a social safety net because it helps everybody. Um, but at the same time, it's clearly discredited itself, and we should no longer expect it. Um, we should demand it but not expect it. Okay. Um, and when That's it, a good, interesting and, and when it inherently doesn't do it, um, we shouldn't should be surprised. Be prepared to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I think the only thing we can really depend on is ourselves and our attitude and our mindset. Um, the only thing that I that oh god I'm going to my personal development world, but really the only thing that we can control is how much value we give to other people, and then when we give value to other people, they hopefully will give us what we need, which is you know money. Yeah. Um, and I money is that. often like a stand-in for everything else, but like. Um, if I give someone ten thousand dollars worth of value, hopefully they'll give me twenty bucks. Right. Well, probably more than twenty bucks because the bill will be more. But, but you get the point. Like I, I, I don't help. I mean, clients don't. And this is a true for everything. Like my plumber makes my life better because I fucked up my bathroom sink <laughs> and now it will drain again because I can't. I shouldn't be allowed to like unclog my drain. <laughs> um. Something like that. So. I guess that's really all I can control is what I do. No, there is no security. I think it's increasingly true. Like, yeah. as, a, as an old millennial, um, when I got like went to law school, I thought I was going to get a. They were just going to throw job offers at me because I was a Duke, and it was 2008 when I started law school, and all the career guides said you should expect to get about 80 interview offers. Wow. And then the economy immediately <laughs> failed, and I got ten interviews. <laughs> and I got one job offer, and I took it because honestly, they had me exactly where they wanted me. Yeah. Um, so you you, you can never um, plan on things going exactly how they were planned out to be. Yeah. Which is actually, in some ways, hope, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and honestly, this is what we're gonna find out. This is exciting. I'm, I'm trying. I'm starting to think about these times as exciting because we're going to figure out what we're made of. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of times people will realize that they aren't made of what they thought they were, and, and it's often in a good way. Like they will realize that they are way more resourceful than they realized. Um, That's and, definitely true. So I think a yeah, lot of the people. I mean, I don't know. I. One of my personal development things has just been watching some people. I mean, as I've entered the workforce, I'm 24 years old. My first real job was last year and like watching people who do the nine to five thing. And like, you know, I, I, I think if anything, this pandemic and it's awful that a lot, so many people got laid off, but I think it disrupted a lot of people's routines. It, it disrupted a lot of what people thought was the norm. Yes. And now that they have to scramble and reevaluate and maybe potentially look for a new job, it's waking up a lot of people. I think a that, lot of people realize they had terrible jobs. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people realize they, I'm not in this boat, but a lot of my friends who do the forest law realize they had bad marriages once they were stuck at home with them <laughs> and had to like no longer go to work. Do you, you, like you go work 10 hours a day and go to bed and not realize that you hated your husband uh, and oh, that's wife funny or something like that. Like, oh crap, <laughs> we're at home all day together and I don't like being married to this person. Uh, so wow. my expectation, I have to look, but a lot of my divorce is like a hot practice. If I was going to start another law firm right now, let's start a divorce firm. And maybe I'll start a bankruptcy firm, but that's yeah. a different reason. But like, honestly, like people are reevaluing their lives and realizing they could do a lot more than they thought they could. Um, and maybe now they'll do the thing that they were punting mm-hmm. um, because they might realize that they could die any minute. Um, yep. And um, yeah, 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 exactly. So, so I guess I said, like, let, let, let go of the idea that anyone's going to give you anything. But do embrace the idea you can get yourself anything. Right, right. Anything. I, and like, I, yeah. I love that. I love that thing about, you know, if you provide enough value to other people, you will hopefully get the value. Oh, that, you never really will. It just will come back to you. Right. I'm, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll exact, expand that. Yeah, you will get value. You, people will help you if you help them. Yeah. There's. there's a, don't, don't go into expecting you to let help. You might help person A. And person, and later on, person A will tell person B, C, and D about you. And then they will be the, I mean, yes, but get, Obviously, sell your service, but like, but 
it will come back it, if you help people and you're kind or good or do your thing and you're honest and stuff like that and good at it you will get what you need mm-hmm. as long as you value yourself correctly but, yeah. there's there's uh, this mm-hmm. is also very fruity but there's a tony robbins bit and he's like you know i i found eventually like if i helped enough people like i could always find a way to exactly. get what i want you know yeah, you like, have a network you'll have people you'll have yeah exactly no matter what happens you will have something yeah cool um sweet uh but yeah but that's i'll get off my no, you're good. I mean, that's the point. No, the it's the, isn't the point. It's yeah. the rant. No, it's good. Yeah. yeah, and you're totally right. But I mean, Donald Trump is a gift. <laughs> I have to believe he's a gift because I can't stand him. <laughs> he's a gift to make sure you rely on your own self reliance instead exactly. of expecting the government to give you things. No, I think that's huge. And yeah, watching watching uh, watching people rip out, uh, um, well, oh. watching watching people rip out mailboxes was definitely a uh, it's a wake up a, a horrifying yeah. wake up yeah. yeah um cool okay uh great right now this is a news segment bit called notable stories from the news um cool uh this headline says it's loading quick teachers scramble for last will and testament tulsa oklahoma um as start as the start date of school nears, uh, teachers naturally have a lot of thoughts on racing racing through their heads. How many yeah. students will I have? Are my lesson plans ready? Um, and now, in the age of COVID, have I prepared my will? I'm thinking about someone um, who I will ask to take my dogs, said Tulsa teacher Rebecca Sim- Simoko, Simco. Um, She's part of an avalanche of educators racing to get their wills done before school starts. What are your thoughts about that situation? Okay, I'm gonna start by saying the thoughts make me. I, I, I'm I I'm a, I'm a former teacher. I taught two years. It was more than enough for the rest of my life. Um, te- teaching has many good qualities, but being respected is not one of them. Yeah. Um, and it's infuriating that because the government couldn't do its fucking job in February and March and not have a pandemic that may make teachers pay the price by having to endanger themselves. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I'm starting. And also, we're, I mean, we're recording right now in Cherokee County. Um, and Cherokee County opened up its schools and then promptly closed some schools because they had COVID-19 cases amongst the schools because predictably they're idiots. Um, so... Uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> I live in Jericho County. I pay taxes here. I'm going to call my government idiots. <laughs> um, but um, so, yeah, so I have gotten calls personally about wills from teachers and people in public education. Um, and we'll probably continue to get some. And I do recommend if, if you're a teacher to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly people should have done it anyway um and now it's kind of making drawing into clear focus the fact that going to work is now dangerous um yeah um i i uh my mom my mom is a teacher and uh it's definitely like really weird hearing her say like yep like i i've gone in and prepared my classroom because she's she teaches in new york and, and down here people uh like you know go back to school a little earlier yeah um in new york they they wait Start a little longer day, maybe yeah um and it's definitely like horrifying to me because yeah. my mom my mom is uh she's near retirement age you know she was thinking about retiring last year take her cash once you're vested, you get your 20 years, you're out. Right. 25 years or whatever it is. Right. I don't know. She, it's, I don't know. There's That's a whole different situation. <laughs> um, but it's definitely horrifying to hear, like, my mother, who is close to retirement age, is going to be surrounded with, you know, children that uh like that, yes that you know all all have home situations that are variable right i mean yeah. like how many how many variables is that right oh, of course you the, never know where their parents are working you whether they're exposed to right and then the kids uh, now you know it's their vector so now they're all mobile right uh, think about how disgusting your average child is yes there are cesspools of fingers and touching things around of disease i mean their brains are are like are made to like go interact with the world and test it and poke at it and yes, prod at touch, it like, yes, I, I was like, god who was it 
my ne- people licking things <laughs> they're very disgusting yeah they're just full of germs and so now we're gonna stuff all those guys back into i mean yeah i mean it's it's crazy and then the, the one thought that i had you know she's telling me that like all these schools have all these regulations and like oh like we're you know we're sitting six feet apart and i'm like i'm just trying to think to myself it's and like schools also have really bad ventilation sure but yeah. i mean not even that i mean have you ever i mean have you ever like i mean you were a teacher i yeah. don't know i've worked with groups of kids and it's like you tell the kids what you want to happen and they do the exact opposite oh, yeah. Kids will do what they're gonna do, right? I mean, those pictures of North Paulding with the kids all just walking the hallway like normal. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like kids are, and they're also testing adults. And also, I think they're. I think as a high school teacher, kids, teenagers are stupid. I mean, they're they're fine, but as a group, as if you get a group of like uh, hundreds of teenagers together, on average, <laughs> they are, their brain is not developed enough to do rational behavior. <laughs> like social distancing doesn't really occur to them. Yeah, mask wearing stuff like that. They might care more about how their outfit looks with or without the mask. Yeah. Um, as a shallow person, I own like seven or eight different masks depending on what I'm wearing. <laughs> Not so much at work, but that's generally. I so think I that's cool, it, though. I don't. But think... like, there, I would not. Dep- I would not leave my safety at the book at and also think about, uh, also think about this also when school begins they're at their best behavior oh yeah this is it yep this is august and yep. they're on their best behavior you get like a honeymoon period with teaching you get like a month or two <laughs> where they're everything's like, easy they're perform kids are performing and then your right. real personality start to emerge so by thanksgiving you know who's a problem <laughs> you know who you have to be like oh so I'm just like, oh, I have to figure out what to do with Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I think by the end of the year, by winter, by the time convenient winter will get to cold and flu season, it will be even more disgusting. Yeah. So I think that means that if you're a teacher, get your will and also think about your next career plan because honestly, they don't respect you. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot here because we haven't talked about this internally. Um, so to talk about it on a public forum might be a little weird. But sure. uh, uh, I, I saw this other law firm that was doing this like special incentive that they were like giving uh, teachers wills at a discounted rate. Yeah, we, we're, we're doing t- t- will discounts. So cool. I'm giving – so far we're – so teachers we're doing free I – mean, obviously we do, we do free consults um, for teachers. Um for, also, for every, everybody, for, right? I mean, no, well, most people. <laughs> people who come to our um, certain places, we right. will waive their um, consultation fees. Yeah, um, but um, but our teachers, we give discounts. I, as a teacher, I know I know exactly what teachers make, and I know it's not like ex- and teachers deserve stuff. So we'll we give teacher discounts for it um, as well. So for, actually, really for anyone in public education, the schools and stuff like that, like we work with the schools, psychologists too. We give. Be, it applies as well. Anyway, and we also walk inside that building um, every day. We'll recognize the service. And because honestly, it is the hardest, it's one of the hardest jobs. It's the hardest job I've ever had. Um, and honestly, I almost want to hand you a bottle of whatever your vice is <laughs> if you're into smoking cig- cigarettes, alcohol. <laughs> if you have, I, mean, I, was like, okay, I, I will tell a very short teaching story. Um, and when I, and I'll, I'll, okay, expa- hold on. I'll give the expanded version later. And then at the end of this story, we're going to do a, we're, can we, can we tell, can we make a sale around? like what this is like what we're offering to teachers because i think oh, yeah I, yeah yeah okay here we go let's hear the story and, and then it, we're gonna it, it might wanna, come it, up with an offer so, so i remember when i was a teacher like maybe like a month or two into the school year at the end of the class period my principal call had an announcement saying all teachers stay in the building staff meeting at like i don't know 3 30 3 45 or whatever and so she calls all the teachers into the library and she says I also don't talk to the media. It was like about what? <laughs> what? That, her, her literal statements are about don't start. Don't talk to the media. It's like one of, a teacher has been arrested for like what? Oh my like, god! Like, like, you have my attention. She was arrested for selling. A teacher was arrested for selling drugs and, to the kids. Well, we'll oh get, sorry. We'll okay, hold on. But like. It sounds like what? And then, 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 literally at that moment, I was like counting the number of teachers I knew who I could have gotten drugs from, and I <laughs> counted five on, the, on my hand. And I literally, because I literally know, I think hundred relationships have passed. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, definitely passed. I definitely knew okay, one of my good friends. She had gotten drugs from. She had gotten marijuana, not marijuana, not like a yeah, yeah, yeah. from another teacher. I was like, I was like, heck, all the teachers I knew who had drugs. I'm like. Of course, someone has drugs. Oh, that's <laughs> and so then, funny. And then, like later on, we found that it was the inevitably it was the art teacher because it was always yes. the art teacher. But she was selling like I think like crack or cocaine to like wow. parents, which honestly, wow. and those na- people in the neighborhood. My school's in a marginal area, gotcha. but it was like um, 
But she was arrested like a blocker. I think, I think it was arrested, she was arrested like a blocker too from the school selling drugs, like in the by a, a police sting. But it was I was like, eh, that seems about right. That's crazy. But she was at you... the best parent teacher conferences. <laughs> oh my god, I, I was using them being so tense because they're always like explaining, like what 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 your child did or what child, even good or bad. I always find it uncomfortable <laughs> to like talk about it. But those are supposed to be easy. You get money at the end of the her she yeah. Walked have cash at the end of first conferences. Yeah, smoke a little crack, talk about Johnny's yeah, grades, yeah. and then... Uh... I, I, I hope it wasn't crack. But, <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, if you had met her in the situation, you'd be like, oh, you that sounds about right. Wow. But, but so, teach, so she needs supplemental... I guess the story is duplicative because it hits on teachers don't make enough money. Yeah. And also, um, teachers have vices. Yeah. So whatever... If you have a kid... If you're a kid in school and your teacher has like something they do to get through the day, whether it's like a jingle... Whether it's like a puzzle or a glass of wine or whatever get 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 give, give gift them something because they need it i absolutely <laughs> love that so yeah so let's actually form up that offer and and like make it sell- sellable if you are a teacher in the atlanta area we will give I'll you get a- your favorite i'll give you your favorite vice exactly uh, und- yeah oh yeah whatever it is as long as you have expensive vices we'll give you a discounted <laughs> will like cigars or like a puzzle whatever it is we exactly will, yeah we'll give you a discounted will and estate plan and then we will also buy you a bottle of whatever you would like or if it's something else asterisk something (laughs) all terms and conditions apply exactly yes terms the terms and conditions of the contest that we just made up if your vices are illegal i cannot support i can't i will not i will i will not be like the teacher in that story who i believe I have no idea, but she was not in, in my teaching stories. There were multiple teachers in my career, my friends, who were like, "Oh yeah, so and so my school got arrested." So this is all in Mississippi, so none of this, none of these stories are local. Yeah, but like, fortunately, so That's I feel crazy. pretty safe talking about them. I absolutely love that. I can only imagine. I will like, probably have an extended version story about all. There was a much longer form story of that, <laughs> but like, I, to, I'll, I'll get to that later. <laughs> thinking back to like my high school teachers, to imagine them like doing drugs together is like f- extraordinary like, oh that's yeah I, I, I could have met i don't think my teachers are taking drugs together if anything I, yeah i when i was teaching my first year i i, I never i did not use drugs at all my teacher career <laughs> like i would get home from school at like seven or eight i would like think about pouring a glass of wine and be like fall asleep before <laughs> i got around to it so because eating dinner would make me so tired i would just fall asleep and then wake up at like 4 a.m and get started again so Fun. I, it was it was uh, my, 4 a.m what are you doing at 4 a.m you have to get you have to wake up to get everything ready because school starts at like seven so you have holy to holy shit like, so I, I remember one time i woke up at 8 p.m and i thought it was 8 a.m and i was in a complete panic <laughs> I, was about to, I was about to call my principal I was like oh my god what am i gonna do and i was like oh wait it's still dark and you didn't tell because you went you got home when it was dark and you went to work when it was was dark you're you know, describing what? hell that's what hell is <laughs> that's dude. why you should reward your teachers your yeah. teachers are going through it that's a different conversation <laughs> yeah. teachers need to make more money i mean yeah yeah okay um cool we've got about 15 minutes sure. here um or actually do we we started on 50 it's 16 right now oh, we what always, that? uh, so that's that's we got five minutes left that's five okay. minutes left. that's fine yeah, cool. um we're going to we're going to probably run over is that cool sure sweet um this is okay let's do this one um because i know more about this um, this is a segment called estate plans from, I think it's, hold on. What is, what is the name of it? From fiction. Okay. Estate plans from fiction. In the movie, the Aristocats. A movie I have never seen. So this is all going to be new to me. Let me describe <laughs> the Aristocats to you. It's Paris. And for anyone who's watching, who apparently is an old millennial who missed this window of time. <laughs> <laughs> it always creeped me out as a kid. I mean, it's like the the animation is still early. And so like it's kind of janky. And there's this one scene with these two like skinless cats. Or I'm mean, not skinless, but hairless I don't cats. Know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it's oh, very. Skinless cats would be weird. Oh my God. That'd be that would, awful. That would keep me up <laughs> yeah. um, but it always. Always deeply disturbed me as a child. Yeah. Um, anyway, cool. Let me read the plot synopsis here because okay. it has to do with estate planning. Sure. In Paris, 1910, Mother Cat Duchess and her three kittens, Berlois, Marie, and Toulouse, I don't speak French, I'm, I took German in high school, um, live with retired opera diva, Madame uh, Adelia Bonfamiglia, and her English butler, Edgar. One day, while preparing her will with lawyer, um, with lawyer Georges Hattacout, Hattacute, I don't know, um, Madame declares that her fortune will be left to her cats until their deaths, and thereafter to Edgar. Edgar hears this 
through a speaking tube, one of those little like <laughs> horn trumpet things from your ear, um, and plots to eliminate the cats. He later sedates them by putting them by putting sleeping pills in a milk mixture intended oh. for them, and then drives them to the countryside to abandon them. There, he is ambushed by two hounds, Napoleon Lafayette. Um, he loses his hat and umbrella, and the cats are stranded in the countryside. Um, while Madame Adelie de Rockfort, uh, the mouse, and Fru Fru, the horse, discover their absence. So cool. Um, the movie is about how they get back to Madame and everything. Um, I mean, she wanted to leave. Her, so is, is Madame a person? Yes. She wanted to leave her estate to her cats? Yes. So she's this <laughs> rich opera singer, and she has uh, planned her estate so that it goes to the cats. Uh, and then after the cats die, like it goes to Edgar. Who's Ed- is Edgar a person? Edgar is a person. He's the butler. Okay. That, that's actually legally work. Okay. That works. So what she's talking about under Georgia law is a pet trust. Okay. Um, where you can set aside a sum of money for the care and maintenance of your pets. Um, typically, they keep them in their accustomed standard of living. In this case, it might be kind of high. I don't know what <laughs> Paris cats. Get. Well, um, the, they're the Aristocats, so it's I, very I, high. I know my cats are not Aristocats, but they cost me a ton of money. <laughs> like, um, like, everything costs a lot of money. Um, but... Um, and then upon the cat's death, then it would revert. Then it goes to Edgar. Yeah. Because a pet trust has to go to a person eventually. Okay. So um, under under no state's law can you leave a bequest directly to an animal yeah. or any non-human because okay. they have they aren't people. So we set some minimum standards about leaving money to be sp- – an animal can't spend money or make decisions about it or make decisions about their own care. Yeah. Similar to, it's similar to like not leaving, you can't leave money directly to children without a conservator or anyone to supervise it for them. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. So cats we're looking, for, we're looking for sound mindness of, of law in cats, even the, even the smartest cat in the world. My cat is fairly smart. He cannot, he can open doors, but he can't like manage a bank account. So, <laughs> so we're it. keeping our standards reasonable. But a pet trust does work. Um, Having said that, um, depending on the terms of the trust, if he was knocking off the pets to try to get money, yeah. So, so I think I think that's part of it. abandoning them. Let me let me frame it up for you this way. Yeah. Um, is this possible? So, so could I? Would so so let's say so I can sign my fortune over in the form of a pet trust to my pet, at least for the pet's lifetime. Yeah. And then I could, if I had a butler, I could say the butler would inherit everything after exactly. the pets die. D- can the butler? Um, would it be possible to prevent the butler from spending any of the money while the pets are still alive? Well, the pet, the butler has fiduciary obligations to the cats. Okay. So while the cats aren't, can't, well, a cat can never be a beneficiary, can never make decisions. A cat still theoretically has interests that should be respected. Okay. Um. So if I leave a million dollars, so Edgar, was Edgar also the one who sedated the cat? Yes. Why did Edgar? Do, okay, this is the confusing part for me because Edgar's the remainder beneficiary. Yeah. Edgar is in really trying to mess it up for himself. If Edgar had just done nothing, <laughs> yeah, he would have been fine. He has all the remainder interest in the trust, and honestly, no court would probably I mean. Since he also has the remainder interest, there'd be very few people who'd sue him for a breach of fiduciary duty. Because he has your duty to the cats during their lifetimes, and it, he has a duty to himself afterwards. Yeah. And honestly, a size of the pet trust is, often can be limited in scope to the really? amount that can reasonably be used for the care of the pets. Okay. So it wouldn't be a no cat would get a hundred million dollars. A okay. cat might a cat you might need a hundred thousand for a care of a cat or whatever it is. It's, it's like our wildest expansion of what the cat's care would be. Let's say the cat's got cancer. And it still took five thousand a month in cancer treatment, so around like sixty thousand. I don't think you could come up with a number wild enough that would you could spend that much on a cat. Okay. So the Edgar would still have be able to get something, right? Except right. Edgar may have. Except I don't know if the madam found out about it, but if she did, I imagine she might have just cut Edgar out. Um, yeah, no, and, and eventually that's what happened. I mean, I don't. It's, spoiler it's, alert to a movie that came out in I think 1990. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I'm probably not gonna watch it. <laughs> you, like, honestly, it's very. I'm maybe sorry. Maybe I would, but you, you could tell me the end of a movie and I'll still see it. 1970, I, I, December 11th, 1970. Oh, is then, what then I have no, I have no excuse for not watching it. <laughs> I, it happened way before I was born. I mean, it's it's definitely a trip. The cats play the piano and they go. Oh, it's, the, it's a whole deal. Um, but okay, cool. So so. 
But, but answer you this question. You do things that make the trustee mad at you, to make the benefit, to make the person right. giving you money mad at you. Especially before they, they're dead. Before they die, yeah. <laughs> Be on their good terms before Because honestly, die. the cynical part is that the dark part of humanity is that he, the madam dies. He's the trustee of the cats. Yeah. Can he kill the cats? If she's not around? That's nobody will know. That's the part that's a question. Yeah. Um... He has to do it in a way that's cats, not fishy to the court. Cats don't even live. Cats don't live forever. <laughs> like, like honestly, if it just waited the cats out, cat a long lived cat might live twenty years. That's a long time. Cats get into accidents. <laughs> <laughs> like, I okay. don't know. So he could have craftily killed. If he was a little he bit more cunning, he could have killed these cats. He could have created the situation where the cats die okay i have a couple questions okay um so so i'm madam i have a hundred million dollars i sign I up i do not advocate killing cats by the way <laughs> I, i'm a cat person i like cats even the mean cats i like but cat i don't recommend usually aligning the interest of your pet of the person who's in charge of they your person who's in charge of taking care of your cats their interest should not be in your cats dying right they should be aligned ideally you should pick a different person to be your pet trustee but technically and also even a different person ideally be trustee at all yeah these should all be no edgar should not be anything edgar's interest should not ever be served by the cats dying okay honestly you should probably structure it so that edward get at me with edgar gets some sort of lump payment that keeps, keeps them from, alive from keeps him from being interested in your cat's death gotcha <laughs> if if for the sake of the film and the sake of the plot of the movie if it were to happen in real life could I potentially set up a thing where Edgar's not allowed to spend any of this money that he's eventually going to inherit uh, for the duration of my cat's lives? You could. Okay. You could. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous for the cats, but yeah. yes, you could. Um, I love that. That's great. Ideally, if you were going to do that, set up a completely different person as the trustee over the cats. Okay. And then once the cats die, then Edgar gets the money. Gotcha. So I would trust someone who likes cats. Or likes your cats in particular <laughs> to like do that. Gotcha. Um, cool. Okay. Cool. That was my question. Is 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 that possible? The scenario makes me. I don't know if I could handle watching the Aristocat. I was just, <laughs> an adult now. I'm it like, is a Ooh. very dark, awful movie. It's like I, it, I have no bad memories. I wouldn't be triggered, but it sounds really bleak. You know, I think <laughs> I think old Disney movies are so interesting because like they they like it, it's a huge investment, right? Because it's so many people's time because they're yeah. literally hand drawing. It takes the frames. like years to make those movies. It's it's brutal and terrible. I think even modern animated movies take like two to three years to make. Right. Like Pixar movies, I think it take multiple years. And it's still excruciating. And even harder. And that's, those are even harder to make. Right. But. <laughs> I don't know. Back when it was before it was rather, like validated, drawing by hand harder to make rather. Yeah. Right. Before it was validated, though. I mean, now we know if you spend a couple million dollars and you get some good writers, like you can make an animated movie. But when they didn't know, I think they they would put these these things in those films that yeah. were like truly awful to watch. Like Bambi. You ever watch Bambi? Yes. Like when when the mom gets shot, it's like oh my god. Or like you know, I mean Mufasa with the with yeah. the. It's like oh man. So I think I don't know. There's a lot of gambles on those. Right. And so it, like there were also, they, there, were, there were also were a lot of trash animated movies that. that that's true. To make money. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I always thought it was so interesting that, like, you know, I mean, uh, they they put those in there so that they would actually they they basically were guaranteed to affect people in like a very real emotional way. Yeah. Um. So that they didn't I think, flop. I think the, the, cat, the animal part makes it more connecting. Because yeah. honestly, if you made if you turn the cats into children and you and someone sedated your children and dropped them in a field, <laughs> that would be monstrous. People would probably be. Up Pitchforks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that was that's the series of unfortunate <laughs> events, and we're going to talk about that one next yeah. week. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, let's talk about death and taxes or listening if you're on Apple or any other podcast network. Um, guys, if you are listening on a podcast network, go ahead and give us a five star review. We would really, really appreciate it. Um, and post a comment if you, again if you have any questions about estate planning, um, or you know any like tax questions or I don't know. Stephen's oh, an yeah. expert in a lot of things, so um, post them in the comments yeah. and uh, we'd love to get back also, to you leave us a voice message um, you, you could email anything to questions at let's talk about death and taxes.com 
and I would be happy to answer questions. Awesome. Like um, mm -hmm. Again, none of the advice given on this show is legal advice. This is all like basically. Oh yeah, I'm know. a lawyer, but I'm pulling stuff out my ass. I'm <laughs> d I don't know your legal scenario. I'm just talking it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you you do not have attorney client privilege. Like there's a bunch of like you know. If you want me to be your lawyer, call me. Right. And we can we can see if I can represent you. Right. Um, cool. If you would like a will and estate plan, if you're a teacher, uh, we will buy you a bottle of booze or your <laughs> vice. <laughs> sure. We will give you a discount. Um, and uh, yeah, um, you can call us uh, or visit us on the web, modernestateplanning.com yeah. um, in the Atlanta area, by the way. Um, and uh, cool. Our number is also 404-939-7562. Also, if you're not a teacher, uh, we would so still love, Yeah. And if we're outside Atlanta, give us a call. We can definitely put you in touch with someone who can help. Yeah. Sweet. Is there anything else that I am missing? Oh, no. I think we're good. Awesome. Episode two in the can. Steven, thanks so much. This was fun. Boom. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Awesome.